Hello and welcome to Adventures in Coriolis. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about some considerations that we all should be keeping in mind before we book that next cruise. Now, if you're anything like me, you've just got the itch to book a cruise. I always like to have a cruise on the horizon to, not the ship horizon, I just mean in time. I like to have a cruise booked and ready to go, something I can be planning and looking forward to. However, this year has not afforded opportunities to do that. I did have at one point a couple cruises booked for this year, however they kept getting cancelled. I would rebook, take the onboard credit that the cruise line was offering me, then that would get cancelled. It was this endless cycle. So when will this endless cycle end? That is just anyone's guess at this point. However, I'm going to tell you what we know so far and some things to keep in mind before you hit book. The first consideration to keep in mind is when do you plan on sailing? Now currently the CLIA or the Cruise Line International Association and all of the cruise lines that are a part of that, that includes all the major cruise lines in the United States, Carnival Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, so on and so forth. They've all agreed that they will halt cruises through October 31st. So if you go to any of those cruise lines websites right now, you're going to see that there are no cruises available to be booked until November the 1st. Now, does that mean that that's a sure thing and that you can go right now and book a cruise for November the 1st or you know through the end of 2020? I wouldn't. Like I said, we've seen this cycle over and over. This is the third time that this halt and agreed halt through a certain date through the CLIA has happened. It could happen again. Earlier this year, I put out a video specific to Carnival Cruise Line, just sort of predicting that they wouldn't sell again in the year 2020, and I still stand by that. I don't think that cruising at large like we know it uh, is going to return for some time, but I definitely don't think we're going to see any cruises happen for the remainder of 2020 at least. And personally for myself, I wouldn't book a cruise prior to the spring of 2021 uh, just to be safe and to see how things play out. And also see what happens to our friends over in Europe that where cruises have resumed now over the past few weeks and will continue to resume over the next couple of months. So I still think we have a ways to go in the United States when it comes to cruising. Wouldn't book a cruise prior to the spring of 2021. The next consideration to keep in mind is that the ship you book for might change. Now I like to book uh, primarily Carnival. I'm pretty brand loyal to Carnival or have been so far. And I like to book on the newest ship. I like to get a feel of what the cruise line's offering with each of their new builds. So if you're like that and you know you pick a certain ship, there's no guarantee that that's actually going to be the ship that you sail on when the cruise comes around. We can see this has happened recently as the cruise lines have sold off quite a few of their ships. Let's talk about Carnival Cruise Line specifically. They have gotten rid of four of their fantasy class ships and two of those have already gone to the scrapyard and it looks like two more will be following those over the next uh, weeks and months. As these cruise lines dump their ships, they're gonna have to move ships around to make up for those ships. They're gonna have to cut some home ports in the United States so I wouldn't have my heart set on sailing on any one ship or the other because that could change. We've already seen this specifically with Carnival Cruise Line over the past few months as they've had to shift uh, folks onto different ships and different itineraries or tried to match them at least uh, down in Miami and Fort Lauderdale as they've had to move some ships around to make up for some of those ships that have recently left their fleet. I think we'll also see uh, some of the ships repositioned to some of the more popular home ports uh, as cruising ultimately is going to have to decrease a little bit. So even if you book a cruise and, uh, you know, let's say next summer and you think, well, yeah, cruising will be started by then. What's it going to be like? How many cruise ships are going to be left for your favorite line? What home ports are going to be left? So just don't get your heart set on the ship that you book, that that's going to remain the ship that you actually sell on because it's already happened to a lot of people. That change has already been made. And I think we're going to see a lot more of those changes happen as we continue through this pandemic. And that leads right into my third consideration to keep in mind. If the ships change, so can the itineraries. And I think uh, there's actually a pretty good chance that we're going to see a lot of itineraries that are currently out there on the cruise line websites change as cruising opens back up for several reasons. I think the biggest being that are the ports, uh, let's take for sailing from the United States, the most popular place that people sell from the United States is the Caribbean. Is the Caribbean ready to accept a ship of passengers, a cruise ship of passengers coming onto their islands, are they ready to take on that risk uh, for them and their health system on that island? I think we're going to see a lot of islands not ready to take cruise ships or turning cruise ships away 
Uh, right before cruising halted in March, we did see that where a ship would show up ready to port at a particular stop and they would be turned away. So I do think that we're going to see a lot of itineraries uh, shortened. I think we're going to see popular port stops cut for a while. I think it's going to be quite a while before we have you know, all those locations and exciting destinations. However, I do think the cruise line will make up for this a little bit. Of course, there are quite a few cruise line owned ports. You know, you think of Half Moon Key in the Bahamas for Carnival Cruise Line and you have Coco Cay in the Bahamas for Royal Caribbean. So they all have their private islands now or most of them have their private islands. So that could be an option that they're taking these cruises primarily to their own private islands. Also think that shorter itineraries are gonna be a possibility. So if you book on a seven day cruise, let's say for April, 2021, and cruising starts back up in March of 2021, I think we're gonna see a lot of those itineraries, at least initially when cruising resumes, scaled back a bit. In addition to itineraries possibly change, and I also think that the port experience will likely change as well. So if you do get to cruise to your favorite cruise port, I think that, again, at least initially, it's gonna look a bit different than it did before. We can already see that in Europe when the MSC ship sailed a few weeks ago, it was sort of the guinea pig, the first ship back out since the pandemic began. They were not letting passengers off the ship and go around the port on their own. All the passengers had to go with the cruise line. They had to be on a cruise line excursion. So basically they had to be with the cruise line at all times. It was very controlled. You couldn't just show up, let's say at Cozumel, get off the ship, go under the island for the day, come back on your own, get back on the ship. No, you had to be holding the hand of the cruise line the entire day. I do think we are going to see more of that. And that is going to come to the United States and the United States cruise lines. When cruising resumes, you are going to be encouraged and actually required to take a cruise line sponsored excursion when you get off the ship and you're not going to be let off on your own. Now they were strictly enforcing these rules over in Europe on the MSC. I did hear of some passengers that were kicked off and banned from the cruise uh, because they tried to break the rules a little bit. So I think we're gonna see strict rules in place about what we can and cannot do in the ports that we visit when cruising resumes. The next thing to consider is that cruising as we know it will definitely change. I think that cruising as we know uh, in general will be different uh, in several different ways. The biggest I think is gonna be buffets and I think we've already seen some of the cruise lines talk about this. Uh, in that there's not going to be any more self-service. You can't just go up to the buffet. I know that's, that's sad, right? Uh, you can't just go up to the buffet and pick off what you want and get it yourself. I think you're going to have to uh, be served literally everywhere you go on the ship. Uh, second, I think you are going to be selling with fewer people in the future. I think they're going to cut capacity. In fact, we know that they are. Uh, they did that in Europe on some of the cruises that have sailed and will be sailing soon. And uh, it's, even the U.S. lines have already said that they're going to be booking their cruises at a reduced capacity to make sure that, you know, we can adhere to social distancing. And I think that's another thing to consider, that there will be rules enforced, um, at least initially, about masks and social distancing. So prepare yourself for that now. I don't think, you know, you're going to be able to book a cruise again, let's say, for next April and go without a mask and go without social distancing. I think all these things are gonna be different. You're gonna be required uh, to, to, there's gonna be protocols in place to keep the passengers safe. So if there's less passengers on the ship, that just goes without saying, it's gonna cost more to cruise. I think uh, it's a supply and demand thing. If it, they're sailing with fewer people on each ship, then it's gonna run the cost of the cruise up. In fact, I think Carnival Corporation already said to expect higher prices in the future. So when you are looking to book a cruise down the road, uh, I think you can expect to start to see those prices inch up and up and up, especially when, I think when people get familiar with cruising again and, and feel comfortable cruising again, we'll start to see an increase in price. Now I already mentioned that uh, it's likely when you're on board, you're gonna have to wear a mask and social distance, but I think we're also gonna see protocols in that, uh, you know, a more intensive health screening before you get on the ship. I think that they are going to be taking temperatures at the ports. They're going to be, uh, you know, very strict about who they let on their ship. So if you show up with the temperature, um, you know, I think you're probably going to be turned away. You're not going to be able to get on the, certainly not going to be let on the ship uh, if they suspect that you are sick. Um, you know, in the past, they've always sort of done this because you always have the risk of norovirus on a ship, they've always given you a health questionnaire, but I think it's gonna be strictly enforced. And you know, you and potentially your entire party could be turned away at the port if you exhibit any signs of 
being ill or having the virus. Now another consideration to keep in mind before booking that next cruise is that the personnel could be different on that sailing. Uh, this sort of ties into the ship being different, the itinerary being different. I know a lot of folks like to sell certain ships because they, you know, they have a favorite bar staff or they have a favorite waiter or room steward or cruise director. Uh, and I know that's a big thing that people like to book a cruise based upon who the cruise director is going to be. Now let's again switch back to talking specifically about Carnival Cruise Line for a moment. I do know that Matt Mitchum was um, very well known across uh, Carnival Cruise Line. In fact, I sailed with him a couple times when the Carnival Vista came out in 2016. And he was going to be, he was slated to be the cruise director for the new Mardi Gras, which is now slated to premiere in February. I don't think it will premiere in February, but we'll talk about that some other time. But he announced just a couple weeks ago that he is retiring from Carnival. So that just goes to show you can't book a cruise, right now at least, uh, based upon what cruise director you might think might be on the ship or what staff might be on that ship. You also have to consider travel logistics to and from the port because there are so many travel restrictions, local travel restrictions in place now. Um, you know, the airlines, is there even going to be a flight? So many flights have been cut in this country. Are there going to be flights available for you to get to the port on the day you want and the day you want to get back? Are you going to have to make a bunch of stops? Will your flight be canceled? when you're supposed to leave and you might miss yeah, it's so many things to think about and consider uh, local travel restrictions i know a lot of states have imposed a quarantine of sorts so they've strongly encouraged folks visiting certain states to quarantine upon entering or returning to their state so these are all things to keep in mind the travel logistics of getting to and from the port and finally the final consideration that i'll leave with you today uh, before you book your next cruise is think about the money that you're potentially losing. Now the cruise lines are currently, uh, like I said, they're booking cruises for November and December. However, are there plans in place for cruising to begin in November and December? We really don't know, but it doesn't appear so. It doesn't appear likely that cruises will happen for the remainder of this year. So why are they still booking those cruises? Why was Carnival Cruise Line still booking cruises on the Fantasy when it was already reported that the Fantasy was sold and on its way to the scrapyard? Well, the answer is simple. They need money. They are not making any revenue because they're not sailing. They haven't been sailing for months. The cruise lines are not in good shape right now. That's the sad reality that we all just have to accept. They're not making any income other than what people are giving them by booking cruises in the future. If they dangle that carrot in front of you and say we're opening bookings for November and December, that instills hope, that's great, let's have hope. But think about the realities of that. Think about the realities of where the cruise industry is gonna be if they don't get to sail until summer of 2021. There could be a lot fewer cruise lines left. So what happens if you've paid for your cruise or if you've paid uh, you know the deposits to even book the cruise if you've given you know money for excursions and all the things you can give the cruise line money for for your cruise what happens if they go under you lose that money again this is just my opinion and just how I feel about it but I don't really feel safe giving money and a lot of money what money it you know requires to put down a deposit on a cruise right now until I'm certain that cruising begins again because I don't want to put a lot of my own money, my personal money, at risk of losing it completely uh, if the cruise line were to go under, unfortunately. This is also why um, I'm not investing in cruise lines in the stock market right now, just for the same reason, because I just want to see cruises started back up uh, and, and things going well again. Now, there is promising news because, like I've said, there have been cruises started again over in Europe. And in fact, the Carnival Corporation, Carnival Cruise Line being a smaller subsidiary of that, uh, Carnival Corporation and that also includes Costa Cruises and Ada Cruises and both of those have announced that they are going to be sailing again soon in Europe. Now like I said it looks different than what it did before. Uh, I think uh, sort of like what MSC did uh, Costa is only going to be sailing one ship over in Europe and I think they're going to do a seven day sailing to a few ports at least. And then Ada also said over the next month or two, they're going to start sailing again as well. So that's promising. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but just be safe if you're thinking about booking a cruise, if you're considering, especially over the next, I would say, um, 
four or five months if you're thinking about booking a cruise for that time range. So these are all just my opinions and these are all of my considerations that I'm applying to myself. Um, and I hope that you found this video useful and I would like to hear from you down in the comments. What do you think uh, cruising is going to be like when it starts back up? When do you think cruising might start back up? And do you have any cruises booked uh, through the next few months or, or through the end of the year or early next year? What are your thoughts? I'd like to hear from you. And I would like to thank you for watching this video and making it to the end. This is our first video in my new studio and I'm super pumped and I promise there are more videos coming down the line. I invite you to please subscribe to the channel. And if you've already subscribed to the channel, I invite you to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the next video when it comes out. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.